Good morning, everybody. This is Jorge Fernandez with Kativ Technologies. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for Kativ AVA today. I, I'm really happy to let you guys know that today's speaker is uh, Mike Prom from Autodesk, Product Manager for Fusion 360. Uh, he's actually a, a personal friend and uh, also a former colleague of mine, so I'm happy to have him show us uh, Understanding Fusion 360, which is, by the way, a class that he taught at Autodesk University this year. So uh, plenty of good information for everybody. Um, and we'll also have uh, some follow-up here where we'll have actually a data set that everybody will be able to um, experiment with after this. Really quick before we get started, uh, for those of you that are new to this program, this is a, a live year-round program we have so that uh, different people in the manufacturing space can get to know their products a little bit better. Some of the upcoming sessions next week we'll be discussing inventor constraints and joints. We'll have a session on skid design, and then we'll also take a look at uh, flow issues and how we can solve those very easily in under 30 minutes. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and kick it off to Mike. Mike, it's all yours. Welcome, everyone. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, like Jorge said, my name is Mike Crum. And uh, my background, real quick, is a, I'm a degree mechanical engineer. I've worked in industry for small startups um, to big companies like Bobcat, Case New Holland, some work with Articat in the medical industry as well. Um, after that, I was an application engineer and uh, I worked at Kativ, and now I'm a product manager at Autodesk. Like Corey said, this is a, a class, and the, the goal of this class is to inspire you uh, about design. So if you look at these two objects on my screen here, the BB droid and then the megabot fighting robot, uh, you can see just by the lines and the, the curves, the, the megabot looks rugged and menacing, and the BB droid looks lovable and friendly. And it all has to do with their shape and their design, what kind of motion it evokes, and um, what you feel just by looking at them. Back in 2008, there was a gentleman named Gray Holland who created this form called the periodic tables of form. Well, he doesn't say what each of these things are. They all provide the same function. So they all do the same thing. But if you look at them, they actually look completely different. And we'll go through, uh, I'm going to go through a presentation, uh, just kind of talking about them, giving an example um, about you know what products that you see every day capture some of these different design elements. And then we're going to do a um, live demonstration of myself creating three of these. And that's the material that uh, I've created step by steps so that will be passed along, uh, along with the, the files and then some videos of, of how to do this. So currently, when you do a manufacturing, um, the first thing you need to do is design for function. Um, and, and before you even get that function, a designer might come up with a concept and it looks beautiful and it has all you know great shape. Once you design for function, good companies go back and redesign for manufacturing. Um, after they've redesigned for manufacturing, you can start to see the shape doesn't necessarily look like what it initially looked like. Uh, from there, you can redesign again for shipping and packaging. And through all of these steps, the design loses the original um, shape, the original look of the concept because you're redesigning it. Now, you know the, the, the purpose of redesigning for manufacturing, shipping, and packaging is if you have a product that you sell for $100 and after your first design it's going to cost you $40, but by redesigning for manufacturing and then redesigning for shipping and packaging, you can get down to $30. You know, those are things that are best in practice by companies today. My goal is to inspire you guys to make sure that as you go through that process, you don't lose what that initial concept was. And we're going to look at different techniques of, of how to make designs keep that look and that shape and that feel. Great example here is the Volvo XC90. So the previous version is the one on the left. And the new version that just came out is the one on the right. Now, their design, uh, and Volvo is very well known for having reliable cars. They want to be known for luxury. And if your car, the new one, is now around $70,000, old one was around $40,000. You know, if you're going to make that price jump and you're going to be wanting to known as a luxury brand, your design better reflect that. So just a quick look between the two. The, the one on the right, if I didn't tell you they're both bubbles, you would think the one on the right is a lot more luxury. The one on the left looks you know, a nice car, but you could definitely see the price difference between the two. 
Another thing that affects our design is how we manufacture. Uh, this is a picture from the archives of, of a Boeing facility of you know the old draft board and, and just doing some hand, hand drafting. This is an image of one of our interns that he made his own um, manufacturing machine where it 3D prints and then it also has a CNC head on it. So you can 3D print, print and do some additive design and then CNC it to get the nice refined shape with subtractive design. So also, you know, concepts and, and designs that we couldn't do before since manufacturing is evolving can now do a lot more things today. This is just some examples of some designs that were created using Fusion 360 um, from our gallery. The tool I'm going to be using today is Fusion 360 because I feel it gives you a really good opportunity. You'll see through the live demonstration of techniques to create these objects. Let's go back um, to the pure active table form real quick. We can see the C0 is just simple extrusions and, and C1 is extrusions with fillets. We can also see there's combinations of those and I would challenge you to look at this image and say, which one looks a little stronger? Which one looks like it's more expensive? Which one might look like it's going to last longer? Again, they all do the same function, but the design might make you think, like, for example, C1-2-0 to me looks more elegant and refined. However, a C1 or a C0-1 might look a little more rugged, something that would you know, sit in a construction site. Those examples there use curvature in the design. And this is a great you know, visual here talking about curvature. So the first C0, C0 is positional where the two edges just touch. C1 is tangent. And the thing about tangency is you can actually see the edges of where the tangent line starts and begins, meeting in, you can see the zebra stripes there. There's actually a break in the line. Whereas C2 changes the rate of curvature and it blends it in. Now this helps in refinement um, in your design. For a long time, you know, people have been using C1. It also is a lazy way, if you would, uh, of doing it because it's just simply putting a fillet on there. Now, newer CAD programs have a G2, G2, C2, just different names of the same kind of curvature. Um, that what that does is when you check that box, it actually does that blending. So if you created this part, you would not see where that tangent line starts and stops. We can see here on a simple cube um, the positional tangent and curvature. Again, the curvature, you can see it blends into that point rather than being a sharp edge. And then positional has no curves, it's just sharp edges. Those same objects you can see visually as well with the zebra stripes. Um, the curvature where they blend together, you can see it starts to curve in and curve out versus the tangent, just a sharp line. So let's go through some examples of this. Again, uh, the Megabot example, it's meant to look menacing and rough and it's supposed to be um, you know, this fighting robot. So you want it to look tough. So you want it to be C0. Here's a, a defibrillator. So this is something that you know is used to save people's lives. Now, I want it to look welcoming, like it's something I can use, um, that inviting to use. However, I want it to look reliable and and strong. So that's where I have the C01. Um, it looks rugged, it looks like it's going to work, but it's also inviting to grab and to use. The dwelt drill is, a, is another example of um, C1 where it's just tangency. Now, in this case, it works. It's um, their brand. If you look at a lot of their objects, they're kind of the, the sharper profiles with these tangent curves. And so as we look at these examples, think about brand recognition, and if you can do your design, and if you can do it in similar ways, even with different products, um, you can get brand recognition. A C2 example here is of uh, the LG Flux phone or the faucet, where, you know, this is something, the faucet example is going to be in your home. You want to have this elegant, refined look, or the LG Flux, you want to feel nice while it's in your hand. An example of combining these two different techniques with the C2-0 is the Raptor. So it has the zero for the functionality and the two for um, the form and the look. So this is just a beautiful looking airplane with the harsh edges, but then in the nice blends uh, in between. And 
it invokes some power, but it also looks strong and, and tough. An example of how design can change is of the, the first um, MacBooks. Um, when Apple was entering the market, they weren't really well known. They wanted to be known as just as good as a Dell or the Lenovo, their competitors. So it has the, the reliable look with the C1 too. Forward to their new design, after they've been established, people know they're reliable. Uh, you have the new laptop, it has curves everywhere. There's really no flat surfaces. Um, in fact, if you look at the glass and you look at the edge, they even put radiuses on the edges of their glass. And this example here is just going through uh, combinations. So the headphones have C12, while the stand uses a combination of C1 and C0. Rock climbing um, grip here, and it uses a combination of C10, where it's, it's smooth, rounded edges, but then where the grips are, you have cuts that are sharp. And then finally, going back to the Volvo example I had, um, you can see the, the previous model has an IC12. The new, if you look at the line of the dash uh, um, and how it comes across here and over, and even the seats, um, you can really see that 120 come across. So this is the periodic table of form. We're going to go through um, exercises of building C1, C120, and C20. Fusion 360 is your differentiator. Challenge yourself in how you apply your designs. Again, I'm using Fusion for this example. Um, it has some very interesting design approaches that we'll see here today. And uh, we'll start off by just going C1. So simply, I'm going to start by creating the extrude. Extruding in both directions. Once I've extruded this, I'm simply just going to create some fillets. And you can see how quickly I've made that design. Now, this is pretty easy. Um, I was able to simply just extrude my shape and then add my fillets to this. OK, so I'm going to move on to another technique. Um, this technique here is still using my T-splines. In this case, I'm going to change from spheres which I've shown you before, and I'm now going to do a quad ball. Um, quad balls are uniform all the way around, so it's a little bit different in the aspect of how it's created. You can see here with the shape, that's a little more curvature. Um, again, like before, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to flatten this a little bit. The reason why I have my sketches Let's turn the symmetry on before I do that. I have sketches, so I can use those as guidelines. Um, that first one that I created, when I did just simple extrusions, um, that's going to be my guideline. And if you have guidelines, it allows you to explore and do different design techniques. And when you do, I'll be very similar. So, um, okay, I'm going to go to the side. Smush this down a little bit, and then from the top, smush that in. Not quite that much. There we go. Okay, just like before, I'm going to clear my symmetry. Very important to clear your symmetry when you are going to use the bridge command. And I'm now going to bridge, just like we saw before, these two different shapes. And 
Now, once I've bridged this, uh, I'm going to refine my design a little bit. You can see my sketch underneath here. So I might want to grab this and bring it down. Um, since I did turn my symmetry off when I first did this, I want to turn that symmetry back on. Um, it's always good practice in this case to use both sides. So again, I'm going to grab my point here. I'm going to drag this down. And what I'm using as a guideline is this line for my sketch that you see underneath here. And I'm just going to pull this down um, until I think it looks flat. You know, I could come in here and pull this down a little bit more. Um, this is really something I think is a lot of fun. And I can spend a lot of time um, just dragging this. Now, the thing to look at, I'm just going to use this as an example. If I drag too far, notice how I'm losing where that first circle was. And I don't want to do that because I want this to look and have similar parameters as my other one. So I'm going to keep that about the same. And then from the top here, uh, I'm going to pull these in as well. So um, I'm more concerned about this side. You'll see in a little bit that I use um, a sketch to actually do some cutting. So this is going to be good. Again, I'm looking at my side here. Now, a really fun technique and something that's uh, very interesting is we have some inspection tools. I would, in this case, I'm going to use zebra stripes. And I'm going to turn them on horizontally. I'm going to reduce my number so it's easy for me to see. <coughs> Excuse me. And what this tells me is when I look at it from the side, I'm looking and my rate of curvature isn't constant. Um, what I can do is use my edit form tool simply drag, and what I'm trying to accomplish is horizontal lines all the way across. So I can come up to um, this point, maybe that point isn't straight, um, so I can straighten that point out a little bit, and then grab my rate of curvature on that line. Um, again, trying to uh, come in here, and by dragging this, I'm changing the rate of that curvature so that they're more horizontal. After this, I'm going to do a cut. And I want that cut to be even all the way across. And the way that's going to be more even across is by having my horizontal lines. So I can continue to do this. Um, again, it's a lot of fun. I can come back and tweak it after I made my, kept my sketch. But right now, this just looks like a blob. And um, in this case, I'm actually going to be creating this form here. I want to show you a fun approach to do that. So I'm going to go into my bodies. I'm going to hide that body. And I've previously created some other sketches. Um, this is just to speed up the time. You could do this yourself. Um, going to go into my patch command. I'm going to grab my first set of lines here. Um, so I can grab this and drag that up. I also would like to grab my inner circle. I'm going to do the symmetric so it can go through both sides of my blob. I'm going to repeat that step. Um, this time I'm going to grab this circle and this rectangle. And what I'm doing is I'm creating surfaces. And you'll see when I turn my body back on, that I'm going to use to cut. So if I hide these real quick, this is my blob. And by using one tool, which is my boundary fill, um, I'm going to select everything I've created. So my first body. Um, all these different selections. And I want to keep this middle part here. I'm going to select OK. It now creates a new body. And look at that. And see how quickly I made that shape and that design. So if you look at my first one, and you look at my second one here, both do the same function, but you can see the difference. Now, I'm going to try that other one real quick again. There we go. Again, you'll get a little recap here. So the, the last one you saw, I did quad balls. I'm going to do spheres again on this one. I have it 6 and 6. I'm going to make it 1 inch. I'm going to repeat this. 1 inch. Uh, 
Um, I wanted to rotate this 30 degrees. Sometimes it's easier if you turn off those sketches. I'm going to apply some symmetry to this. Um, again, I just want to smoosh this down. I did say smoosh. Okay, I'll go the same for this one. I'm going to grab this top part. I'm going to bring it down. And when you're dragging, make sure to use negative because that will change your number. I'm going to do the same for the top. I'm also going to flatten. I'm going to do the same thing for this side. And then, just like before, I'm going to take the bottom half, I'm going to delete it. Uh, again, I'm doing this for simplification reasons, um, and I should have turned that symmetry off, so let's do that. And by just having a quarter of it, it makes it easier to make this bridge between the right points. Um, again, when I do this bridge, the important thing that I'm trying to accomplish with this is making sure my lines meet. So this, for my circle, goes across and meets with that other circle. Um, that's very important because it allows um, for me to do my next step um, after I clean this up real quick. And that next step is going to be to harden those edges. Um, so just like before, I'm going to delete this. There we go. And you can see when I mirrored it over, it just made it these internal features. So I'm just cleaning up my model a little bit. as well. There we go. Now once I've deleted these, I can use my fill And there's different techniques um, as far as the fill hole command. I like this reduce because I still need that line, and you'll see why in a minute. To me, it still looks a little too much like a blob. And if I um, go from the side, we can see by turning on my sketches um, where the height I might want this to be at is. Uh, I can come in here and, and grab everything from this side, maybe pull it down a little bit. What I'm looking at here, just kind of like we did with the last model, I'd like this to maybe line up horizontally. I'm going to do the same thing from the top. So if I look from the top, um, you can see where that sketch line is. I'm just going to grab this front area here, hit my form, pull it in a little bit. This is something, to me, it's a lot of fun. I could spend all day doing this. Um, you know, I challenge you to, once you've done a little bit, go back and you can make some changes um, and keep tweaking it. Now, it still looks rounded. And if I go back to my image here, I want some sharp edges. The fun thing with Fusion is I'm able to select geometry. So in this case, I'm going to start off with that line that I told you was important. 
remember what it looks like now um, because it's going to greatly change here very quickly. I'm grabbing this line all the way across, and there's this tool called crease, and that crease is going to allow me to get that nice hard edge um, that I wanted and I did not have before. So we can see that's now connected across. I'm going to do the same thing here. Let's turn out that sketch. So I'm grabbing this, and you'll notice that since this is symmetric, I also have the same thing here. I'm going to repeat that crease command. And the crease looks pretty good so far, but to really emphasize it, um, what I like to do is I'm going to grab this edge, and I'm going to expand that out. And notice as this gets closer to where this edge is right here, so as I expand that out more, um, it becomes a harder edge. So I'm going to repeat that and drag this up a little bit so it looks like a circle still. And just by doing that, if you look at it, look how hard of an edge I have um, versus over here where I haven't drug it out yet. It's nice and soft. So this is something, again, um, you, can, you can fool around with this all day long. Uh, to me, it's a lot of fun just kind of dragging, manipulating. Um, what I want you to take away from this, though, is that I have a simple shape. I'm going in and making some changes, and it's really dramatically changing my perception of this design and of this model. Um, again, using parametric and T-spline, um, just like I did before when I did my patch and I, um, in the last model with my patch I went through and I extruded that out, I now want to um, create a cutout for this. So I'm simply going just to do an extrusion of this. I'm then going to make a sketch so I can do a loft, reuse geometry wherever you can. So I'm going to reuse that circle that I had. Um, from here, I'm going to create a new construction plane based off of my origin that I have. In order to get a distance, um, I'm going to start to drag this up, and I can just reference a point, which makes it a whole lot easier to do. I'm um, going to create a sketch on that new plane, reusing um, a point that I have here, and then reusing that circle that I have there. I'm going to create a quick arc. You can apply a tangency to this. Um, you can, you know, do all sorts of things uh, as you tweak these. The goal is to show you that I can then loft to this, and I'm going to mirror this. Do the mirror as a join. And I'll copy this over in a minute and show you I can do it on the same side, but I want to show you uh, I can now do a combine where I take my body, I take these two that I just created, and we'll do a cut. And I could go back and do some fillets. But very quickly, right, you saw three different techniques of going through and creating first just some extrusions and adding a fillet. The second technique, I made some quad balls. So if you go back um, to my timeline here, I just made some quad balls and connected them together to make some simple geometry. From there, I use some sketches to create these planes that I cut. 
and then the end result is I did a combination that combined the two, and I now have a beautiful um, body that's created from, from utilizing both. And another technique we saw here was with two spheres. Um, I broke it down to quarters. I then combined them. The thing from this technique that I want you to recognize was when I went in and I creased this, and I creased that edge, and then I brought it out to the side. Um, one great thing to do is just go into shaded, and you can really see, let's turn off those um, sketches as well. You can really see those lines and the blends between the sharpness and how soft they are. Uh, again, contrast that with this next model here. Let's go to shaded. You can see how nice and smooth those are. Uh, Jorge, at this time, uh, I think it's, uh, I've used the 45 minutes. I'd like to open up for any questions. Great. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, so I'd like to open it up to questions. Don't forget you have a, a panel there in the uh, chat area, or I'm sorry, in the control panel for GoToMeeting for any questions. Um, I fielded a couple here so far. You know, one, one of the things I wanted to bring up that was a question was how do you get Fusion 360? So you do have it as part of your uh, subscription. Uh, if you don't uh, know how to get access to it, we do have information for you on that. Uh, if you look at our uh, Kativ YouTube channel, actually. Uh, we have uh, a few, I think we have two different sessions on Fusion, which talks a little bit about the different things you could do in there, like rendering and cam, for example, as well as how you can get to it. And of course, you can always reach us if you have any questions on, uh, about that or, or issues trying to get, 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 get into it. All right. I don't see any new questions coming up here. I would just maybe wrap it up, Jorge, by saying, you know, hopefully this gave you some different um, ideas of how to approach a design. The fact that you know each of those end results would directly do the same function. However, you know one might look stronger, one might look tougher. Um, you know, if you're trying to do a brand recognition, is there a technique that you, should, you want to repeat over and over again so that um, when people look at your product, when, no matter which one it is, they know that it's your brand. These are just some things to to think about next time you approach a design. I think that brings up uh, really good points. You know, it, it could really be something to help you differentiate and get to there faster. You know, the, you, the thing here is you have multiple tools, you know, and, and reach for the tools when you need them, right? And on top of that, you know, um, I just wanted to just give a few recommended next steps. You know, so again, on our YouTube channel, we do have previous AVA sessions on the different things Fusion can do. Of course, feel free to let us know in the survey after this what other types of things you might like to learn about it um, or, or things around that or any anything else for that matter. Um, and then that you can download it and you can see that through our previous sessions and white papers and so forth. Uh, and then we will have an email going out to everybody uh, that gives information about the tutorial so you can walk through what Mike presented to us today. Um, and then there will be also links to the YouTube uh, videos of how to do it and follow along yourself as well. So we will have that going out in an email here today, uh, later today. Uh, just a quick Kativ update. I just wanted to let everybody know I'm happy to also um, let you know that Kativ Lifeline is expanding. What I mean by that, we've actually hired a, uh, a few folks on our team. So if you um, are a Kativ customer already and reaching out to Lifeline, you, you'll, um, you'll get to know them just a little bit more. And, um, and uh, if you're not one yet, you know, I just want to make sure that everyone is very aware that we have the uh, help to make sure you get what you need. And also, uh, one other quick thing is we Kativ has a new offering, and it's called Kativ Boost Service, actually. And what this will bring to you is uh, like one-on-one -on -one mentoring, uh, you know where we can actually spend time with you and, and make sure that you get you know exactly what you need and, and you're able to use the tools to, for your solution as you need uh, as well as you know this could be things like two-hour sessions for example to spend with uh, our technical specialists and make sure that you get going on the path you need to go and really it's to be more um, focused and to get more specific on your needs right that's really what these two examples will give you is to make sure that you're on a clear path to success so that you're not fumbling around with the tool or having to search for different things in different areas. We can definitely help you get there faster. So with that, I'll, I'd like to go ahead and conclude. Thank you again, everybody. 
Um, again, you'll get an email later today about where you can get the tutorials. If you have any questions, of course, please let us know. And just I'd like to thank you, Mike, again for uh, for uh, this session. My pleasure, Maria.